All right, here, I'm here with my eldest daughter, and we're talking about uh, some, some RC technology here. I showed, these are all the different drones I have, or I guess drones, all the different vehicles I have, and I wanted to show them all on the, uh, the table here because as I have it set up right now, I can fly every single one, it will fly, drive, or whatever the word is for a seafaring vessel um, with this radio. So this is a DX6 Spectrum, Spectrum radio. So here I've got an, uh, an airboat here. So it uh, goes across the water and floats. And then this propeller here pushes air on this little guy and then this turns left and right. So that's kind of how it turns. Um, all of the components are inside this little plate. This is a, uh, a standard fixed wing aircraft. This is just a fuselage. This is one of my bigger ones. And so this wing kind of goes on top like that. And, uh, and it's a traditional, traditional, you know, uh, elevator, rudder, and then ailerons on the main wing here. And then uh, this, this is one that I, I just bought at a store for, I forget, 100 bucks. So that's a high wing trainer, pretty easy. And then I've got my racing drone up here up front. Uh, this is my racing drone. And then finally I've got my, uh, this remote control car here that I've done a couple upgrades, upgrades to. And all of the components are, are extremely similar, if not the same. You, you need a transmitter to a receiver, you need a speed controller, a battery, and a motor and a prop. And in the case of the truck over there, the speed controller is a little bit different. Instead of it going to a motor, it, it does go to a motor, but it's a, it's a DC motor rather than a three-phase motor. And I'll talk about that in a sec. The way this boat works is it's only on two channels, okay? So I can only go forward and back. So if I have my transmitter over here, I can go forward and back. Well, actually it's, it's throttle, there's no backwards. It's, it's throttle and that'll spin the prop and then no throttle. And then I've got the aileron channel, which normally would roll the vehicle. I have that hooked up to this uh, sort of keel, I guess, or it's a rudder. It's a rudder in the water. Inside are the components. So I've got a receiver here. So I'm not sure if you can see that. There's a receiver in here. Technically, when you're on the ground, you should use an SR receiver, which stands for surface, surface receiver. But I'm using an AR uh, air receiver just because, I don't know, admit it was easier to sort of build or, or design, right? Uh, the speed controller is underneath the motor inside this little compartment. So you know, like if you see here, this is where I plug in, this is where I plug in the battery. And then there's a hole that I built that goes back through there to the speed control. And the speed control is actually inside the boat under here. The three wires, this is a three phase motor. The three wires that come out of the ESC come out of this like epoxy filled hole right here to the motor here. Cool, and then I've got one servo uh, hot glued back down here and then a rod going all the way through the boat to this control horn here, and this kind of comes in and out. <laughs> cool? <laughs> Components, like I said, are the same. You have a, a radio, a receiver, you have a servo, and a speed controller, a motor, a prop, and in this case, I just have one servo. Um, the battery that I have that I've used to, to, to run this thing is a, a two-cell LiPo. So these are two-cell LiPo with the mini Deans plugs. And so if I... I have to select the right, the right mode. Let's see what this is selected. Talk about number right. Yeah. Okay. So this is the right. Um, this is the right. Th this thing, because I can fly all of these, I have all the transmitters, or sorry, all the receivers programmed into this thing. This is a programmable uh, radio. Let's press the go. Uh, I have the throttle down, so that's also a good thing. It's usually good practice to not do this with props, um, but I've done, I, I did this before the video started, so um, it, won't, it won't start up on me. So there, that's throttles down, and then that, that means uh, those are a couple beeps for the speed control. That beeping was the speed control saying, hey, I'm armed. Before I spin up the prop, I, I do want to check the, uh, the uh, uh, rudder there, and I do have it hooked up to the aileron channel, so that's working pretty good. See that? I don't know if you can see it in the video. And then if we uh, apply throttle here, there we go. And then this is kind of in a dangerous situation. Uh, I have the prop 
basically angled directly towards me. So let me let me move it away here and then let's crank this guy up. And there we go. So if we were on water, we would we would definitely start uh, propelling forward. Um, some things you have to remember, uh, you do have to make sure the prop is mounted the right way. There are three wires that go from the speed control to the motor. If your motor is spinning the wrong way, all you do is just swap two wires. So, okay, so this one has the uh, same receiver. The difference is, is that we've got a servo for the ailerons, a servo for the elevator. So the elevator, the elevator pitches the, uh, controls the horizontal stabilizer and it pitches the aircraft up and down. And then it got, there's a rudder here that controls the rudder and that controls the yaw of the aircraft. If you look in the back, you've got a control horn right here that controls the elevator, and then you've got a control horn here that controls the rudder. You can kind of see those as they, as they connect through. These control horns are really, really cheap to buy at Hobby Town if you do want to build your own aircraft like this one. Um, all of the guts, though, are inside here, so I need to, uh, wow. I need to unscrew this guy. Uh, this? Yeah, that's the nose if, if something bad ever happens. Oh my gosh, didn't you know? Yeah, I've actually I've nosedived this aircraft before. Whoa. Okay, so there you go. So on the inside, we've got a couple oh. components. So there's two servos here, back to, just right next to each other, and they both have control arms that go back to here. So when we plug this in, we do need to be careful and make sure that we plug the elevator servo into the elevator port on the receiver and the aileron aileron servo into the correct port. So let's kind of check out these wires here, Elena. So here's the speed controller. This is the battery plug. So there's that's where we're going to plug the battery into. And then let's see. So this is the left servo. So that is going to the rudder. So remind me that this is the rudder, okay, on this side, okay? And then this guy is this servo over here, and that control rod is going to the elevator. So that means the elevator is on this side. So which side is the rudder? Okay, and which side is the elevator? Okay, good job. Right. So then this is the speed controller. So the way the speed controller works is you apply, you send power to the speed controller through the battery. This wire here has three wires. The black wire is ground, the red wire is um, power, and the white wire is signal. So if I look on, if I look on the receiver, hey right, Lou, you want to show them your airplane? All right, look at that. So on the receiver, you'll see the words THRO, which means throttle, okay? Throttle. So throttle is the speed controller. So remember I was saying the black wire is ground, the red wire is power, and the white wire is signal. So when you plug a battery into the speed control, hey, what's up? You were fixing that light you told me something about it. I did say that the black wire is ground, didn't I? Yeah. That's right, yeah, so ground and power is the same thing as light bulbs when I change light bulbs in the house. So what happens is, is that the battery is going to send power to this wire and turn the receiver on. Now the receiver, you need to be careful, on the side, that little square looks is signal, the plus is power, and, then, and the minus is negative or ground. So you got negative, positive signal. So you need to make sure that you plug in ground on the right side. So I'm just going to plug that in, and if you look there, the black wire is right lined up with ground, and the red wire is lined up with positive. You see that? Yeah, and then the white has to be with, this almost looks like a square. That's right, and the white has to look, that. so the square is called a PWM, it's a, it's a square wave. So if you remember like duty cycles with square waves, that's essentially what it is. You, you haven't seen that before, but my viewers probably have. Okay, so now we can plug up everything else, okay? So, do you remember if this was the rudder or the aileron? Which one was this? You remember? Rudder. rudder good job. Uh -huh. So, what we're going to look for is we're going to look for R U D D, rudder, for rudder. And remember, we just have to line up the wires exactly the same way. Okay, and we're going to plug that in like that. All right, is that is that right? Are the black wires on the same one? Yes. Okay. And then this guy was the elevator, then, right? Yeah. Okay. So then we're going to look for E L E V for elevator, and we're going to plug that in. Okay. And then finally, we have this guy over here, the wing, right? So the wing kind of pops off, and there's a servo in the middle with two control arms here. So when this rotates this way, it lifts this one up and this one down. And when it rotates the other way, this one goes down and that one goes up. So you get roll control. And you basically plug this guy in the same, same way. You just look for AIL for aileron. So I'm going to look for AIL. 
plug that in. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of wires. And if you have landing gear or you know two motors or differential thrust or anything like that, like your, your receiver just gets more complicated. Yeah, even copy the ball in a straight line. Exactly. See, and we have to make let's make sure all of our black wires are on the back for ground. Once you check, make sure all the black wires are in the back. Black check. This can run with a two cell or a three cell battery. So the speed controllers are typically rated for the cell rating. So as you increase cells, you increase voltage, and you're also going to pull more current. So we have to make sure we grab the correct battery that doesn't pull too much current and also has the right connector. So this, so this is a three-cell battery, so it's got a nominal voltage of 11.1. Hey, buddy. Good. Well, what if it starts flying? Uh, well, let's make sure the transmitter throttle is down. And if you want, we can flip the engine cutoff switch. Some of these, a lot of these radios have engine cutoff switches so that they don't, they don't just take off, you know, even if you have it set. And the, my throttle is down, my engine cutoff switch is on. I'm going to plug in the battery. Okay. And, and that sounded okay. It was a little weak. Maybe the battery's running down. But let's check the ailerons. Okay, so the ailerons are working good. Let's check the elevator. Okay, elevator's working good, so we did right. So remember, so remember with these radios, you've got aileron is this way, you've got elevator is this way, this way is rudder, so let's check the rudder, so the rudder's good, and then let's lift up the nose a little bit, and then we're gonna just pulse the, oh wait, we gotta flip the engine cutoff switch, and then let's just pulse the throttle a little bit. All right, good, so we've got, we've got thrust. Um, this aircraft is, absurdly overpowered. It's super light and it's got like a thrust to weight ratio of like 1.5. Can you put this back on? You want me to put that back on? Okay, cool. So what we can do is we can sort of shove the guts in here. So when you buy an aircraft from a store, they will make sure that the aircraft is, is balanced. And if you're imbalanced, your aircraft won't fly. I mean, I mean, you, you can think, right, like if you like try Now, what if, it, what, what if you like throw it into the air and it like crashes? Yeah, it just immediately crashes or flips this way. You need to make sure it's balanced. Now, on the ground, you can put it like that and say everything's good, it's balanced. But in the air, the thing is, is that your lift, the air, right, is lifting the aircraft here. And so if you look at the wing, right, and you go halfway and then a quarter way, right? So if you go a quarter way down the wing and you grab here and here, a quarter way, the aircraft should perfectly, and it might, if it's a little off, it's okay. It should perfectly balance right there, okay? And if it doesn't, if it's tail heavy or nose heavy, you need to move some components around to make sure that's in the right spot. Otherwise, your aircraft won't be balanced. I, I closed up all the components, so now this airplane, I never have to take the wing again, wing off again. I can just put the battery up in here, and everything's good. And if I check the CG now, right, I should be perfect, right at the quarter cord. The other thing that I'm doing too is I'm doing what's called a wingtip test. So, the when the air has has high pressure underneath the wings and low pressure on top, it's gonna lift the entire airplane into the air, right? Well, worst case scenario, you're flying and the whole wing just, just snaps on itself, right? Like, a, like an alligator, boom, just, did, just totally crushed. You don't want that to happen. So the, the best thing you can do is do what's called a wingtip test where you pick it up at the wingtips and if the wing flexes, it's, it's flexing a little bit, but if it flexes too much or it breaks, you would, you, you, it wouldn't have flown well. And so you need to redesign the wing and make sure that your wing can support the weight of the aircraft. Okay? Okay, so when, when I bought this car, okay, it came with this radio. And these are pretty standard radios because just like the airboat, this is a two-channel truck. So you can drive forward, drive backwards, and then you can turn right and turn left. Now these are neat because they're very, very easy. You kind of have this nice cushy steering wheel on it. But the problem was, is this was using an, an Iconics uh, receiver, and I couldn't use my Spectrum receiver, or transmitter, sorry. Here, if you look at the inside of the, the truck here, on this side, I have a AR6200. So again, it's another AR, another aircraft receiver. <laughs>
and I've just got two servos plugged into it. I've got the speed control over here plugged into it, and then I have there's a there's a servo up front here that controls the steering of the truck. Actually, now that I think about it, those three phase motors they can only rotate one way, no matter what, unless you swap the wires. On this one, you can actually reverse the polarity through the wires that are connected, and it'll spin one way or the other. And so. Um, this guy's got this big two cell battery on the inside and it plugs in right here and, and it goes. So let's, uh, let's select the right mode on here, plug this in. And in this one, we don't have to worry about props. We just have to worry about the truck just kind of taking off. Props, just the truck like taking off. I think the speed control has like an on button. Watch out, those might go. All right, so let's see. So. I've got the aileron hooked up, there we go, so the aileron's hooked up to the wheels. I right? can't undo, I cannot touch that because they're all like right. Well, no, that one's not plugged in. This one's plugged in. So if I move the throttle, hmm, hmm. Whoa, I had, to, I had to initialize the speed controller. All right, so there we go, so there's forward, and I can really crank this up. The other cool thing is that I can go, if I, if I get the setting right, I can go, I can go backwards too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the four cell um, battery. And it can actually, I, I set it up so it can run the drone and it can run the airplane here. And I built this airplane on purpose so that I could use the same battery for both. Um, Cool. So drone here operates on a pretty similar principle. You, well, you have a battery that runs power to four ESCs in this case, and the four ESCs have three wires, just like the four. The difference is, it's like these are soldered. They're a little bit more hardy ESCs. The other thing is, is because you have four ESCs and not just one, you have what's called a power distribution board at the bottom that you plug the battery in, and it distributes all the power to the ESCs. You also have a flight controller because you have four motors. You can't just, you know, apply throttle and then, you know, control the aircraft. Like you need a way to say, hey, if I pitch forward, apply more thrust to these guys and less to these to pitch forward, right? Because on a on an airplane, like you just have one throttle and you have control surfaces. On this one, you need to be able to sort of rotate the drone as you're as you're flying. So you need a flight controller that goes on top of it. Other than that, there's a receiver here in the back that I have uh, zip tied in there. But I did at least want to show this just because the fundamental components are still here. You have a prop, you have a motor, you have a three-phase speed controller, you have power to a battery and a receiver. And, and that's basically it. All right, so for that, that, that quadcopter, I, there, I have these four cell lipos and I actually use the exact same battery for it because I just think it's easier. Um, Again, components are, are the same here. They're just you know organized in a different way. So I've got this crazy 50 amp ESC. If you look, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there the capacitors on the back here are humongous, uh, just because it can it can really hold a lot of current. And then I've got my three phase wires going through the fuselage to the motor and to the prop here. Um, I've got the battery cable hooked up here. And then I have the, the BEC, BEC, I forget what BEC stands for, but it's the five volt power supply that runs to the receiver. And the receiver is actually back here. And then I have the four wires. So I've got um, an elevator and a rudder servo on this side to control the, the tail section here. And then I guess, oh, I have, I have what's called a, a Y splitter. On that last airplane I showed you, I had one servo in the center that had two control horns. For big airplanes like this, sometimes it's better to have a servo on each side. So I've got a servo here and a servo here, which means I have two servo leads. Well, receivers, the simple ones, the cheap ones, they can't control two, two servos like that. So what I do is I have the aileron plugged into the receiver just like normal, but I have what's called a Y splitter, and this hooks up to two different, um, this hooks up to, to this hooks up to two different servos. And so I just plug those in to here and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, again, I'm not gonna light this one up um, because again, this is kind of a bigger airplane and I'm, I'm a little afraid of it. Um, but it operates exactly the same as that, that trainer aircraft that I showed you. The aircraft here is very tail heavy. And so in order to get this to work, I actually had to mount the battery. 
There you go. I actually had to mount the battery like all the way at the nose there. You see that that's a little nose heavy, so I had to put it like right there. And okay, so I, I, I hope this was a, a you know a good overview video of all of all these different types of RC uh, aircraft and trucks and stuff and uh, ground vehicles and how the fundamental components are all the same, right? You need a transmitter, you need a receiver, you need a speed controller, you need a motor, you need a prop, you need a servo a battery and a fuselage and and you can at that I mean if you have those fundamental components you can put it in anything you want